A car bomb explosion outside a hospital in the Libyan city of Benghazi has wounded dozens of people and killed up to as many as 15, though the exact number of those dead is not yet clear. It is believed to be the first such attack to target civilians since the death of the former leader, Colonel Gaddafi, more than a year and a half ago. It might be the first bomb to target civilians specifically, but there have been a number of attacks on diplomatic targets. There was a fatal attack on the US Embassy in Benghazi last September in which the US Ambassador Chris Stevens was killed. And more recently, there was a car bomb attack outside the French Embassy in the capital of Tripoli. But such attacks are just one of the many problems facing Libya in the difficult transition between bloody revolution and a peaceful democracy. There's also a growing Islamist movement in the country, fueled in part by fighters fleeing from northern Mali. The groups who were rejected from Timbuktu by the French-led war have now crossed the Sahara Desert and entered several North African countries, including Libya. Combined with the ultra-Salafist groups who were blamed for the attack on the US Embassy, they've been destroying ancient Sufi shrines, harassing women and intimidating civilians. And then there's the power of the armed militias. The weapons that were used in the fight against Gaddafi haven't just disappeared since his death, and neither have the people who fought him. Just recently, armed groups stormed the Justice and Foreign Ministries in Tripoli and told the government they wouldn't leave until a law was passed banning senior Gaddafi-era officials from current government positions. And that law was passed. A few months ago, Tripoli was also named one of the top 10 worst cities in the world to live in. But is Tripoli and Libya really that bad? We spoke to Libyans from Benghazi and Tripoli to find out more about life after Gaddafi. Uh, life in general has um, uh, is back to normal, almost. We're back to our works, uh, back to our uh, business, back to daily life. The security situation is not great, uh, not at all. The power is actually to the people who've got the weapons uh, at the moment. Uh, that's becoming quite frustrating. You can go out from, from morning to late at night, it's pretty peaceful. We do have an abundance of, you know, rifles on the ground, but I'll tell you, ever since February 17, 2012, when we mark our one year anniversary of the revolution, we don't see guns on the street as much. We can't deny that uh, there are some extremists, but we don't see their effects uh, daily in, in the streets. Lots of the, the, uh, the, the Islamist groups uh, uh, have joined the, the normal uh, democracy process. I don't see, I don't see their threats. Even the uh, Ansar Sharia, which people uh, think they're, they're uh, some of them are part of uh, Gaida. Now they're doing uh, a lot of uh, charity work, and they 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 do campaigns against uh, drugs. They do free clinics for for poor people. So they they already uh, in the civil society uh, work uh, now. There are definitely uh, jihadist activities or extremist activities in Libya, especially in Darna and in Benghazi. These groups have almost no support in Libya. They only have the people who believe in their ideology somewhat. Uh, but many Libyans are moderate by nature, they're Muslims, and they don't like anyone to impose Islam on them. And the proof for that is the results from the elections. There are people who have maybe more rigid, more, more extremist beliefs. What I do see when I flip through the channels, when I'm going from uh, different news uh, outlets, I do see an exaggeration of this. The French uh, Revolution took uh, more than 10 years uh, for, for the country to set it down. From what I see, what's happening right now is, is very normal uh, because we had an armed revolution. There is obviously the expectations of the ordinary Libyans are high and it's only expected in a transitional period. They're expecting a lot and especially after the collapse of a regime, they expect a lot of things to improve. But uh, naturally, these improvements are not kind of going to come overnight. They're not going to happen. It will take years for things to start actually improve.